Welcome to our webinar. Uh, this is Hakan Çelik. Uh, distinguished speakers and uh, audience, uh, welcome to Global Space Satellites uh, show uh, one more time. And uh, we have uh, three distinguished uh, speakers today. Uh, I would like to introduce them. Uh, first of all, uh, Mr. Hassan Hussein Ertok. Uh, I think he's in Ankara at the moment. Welcome yes, to our um, Thank you. And uh, Mr. Francois Gaulier, uh, Executive Vice President, Head of Space and Airbus Defense and Space. He's in France, as far as I understand. Welcome to uh, our webinar, Mr. Gaulier. And now we go to the United States. Uh, uh, Ms. Stephanie Badnarek also is with us. She is a Senior Director of Commercial Launch SpaceX, so uh, three different continents, two different continents and different geographies. Uh, first of all, I would like to ask, can you hear me? Uh, is there any problem with my voice or uh, can you see me clearly? Yes, very well, very good. Um, Mr. Golier? Mr. Golier, yes, just perfect. Great, and uh, Mr. Yes, I can hear you just fine. Thank you so much. So uh, in this webinar, uh, we would like to uh, talk about TurkSat satellite, TurkSat 5A satellite, and new opportunities. This is our title, this is our subject. And uh, we will have a chance to understand the satellite world in general, launching systems, technologies, opportunities, and what's happening around us in space, deeper space. Uh, and we will. I will ask some questions, and our distinguished speakers have 
I think some of them at least have uh, presentations or videos in the beginning or at the end of the program. We will watch them and follow them. Uh, but first of all, uh, I would like to uh, give an opportunity each of us, uh, starting from Mr. Hassan Hussein Ertuk, uh, he's Vice President of TÜKSAT, uh, opening remarks and general ideas, and uh, we are ready to listen to you. Please, Mr. Okay. Ertuk. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sherik. Uh, I'm really honored to be as a part of this webinar, and I'm really happy to share this webinar with you and with my other colleagues. Uh, it's, it's a good place to talk about the, the satellites and TURSAT 5A, and it's a very important uh, webinar for us. Uh, as you know, TURSAT is the national satellite operator of Turkey, and uh, we are currently operating three satellites uh, up in space, and three of them are also under construction, and TURSAT 5A is the one closest uh, to launch within this year. So it's going to bring uh, more opportunities to us, to Turksat and to Turkey, and to, to other countries uh, in, in neighboring countries. So it's it's very uh, it's very important dates for us to make our preparations for 5A, and I'm really happy to share our thoughts uh, during this webinar. Uh, thank you very much, and uh, I want to go to now uh, to France, Mr. Gaulier, please. Uh, now we are listening to you. Good afternoon, everyone. Very delighted to be with you today. Uh, very proud of as well uh, to be with you to share uh, some uh, information about Torsat 5A and the opportunities. So first of all, Torsat is a very important customer to us. Uh, first, it has been for the very first time back to November 2017, we have been awarded by Torsat for the very first time uh, from Torsat uh, contract for two satellites, Torsat 5A and 5B. Turksat is a key operator, and through those two satellites, we will bring to Turksat a much powerful capabilities for their businesses. Actually, Turksat 5A and 5B will bring nearly 45% telecommunication capabilities more than the previous generation, and the lifetime of those satellites will be nearly twice the, 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 the lifetime of the previous one. Uh, this will be done thanks to very uh, innovative solutions that are on board these satellites, in particular... Uh, Mr. Mr. Gorya, Mr. Gorya, sorry to interrupt you, but could you please a little bit approach to the microphone? We have a little bit difficulty to hear you. Okay. Can you hear me better now? A little bit more, if possible. Okay, can, can. Could, you please, could you please pull, if there is a... Uh, is it possible to pull a little bit to, to you? Can you hear me better now? I think it's better now. Okay, so I, I will shout a bit. Uh, so, Thank you, back to what I was saying, it's a very important uh, customer to accept for us, uh, for, who has been awarded to us for the very first time in November 2017, the contract for Turksat 5A and 5B, which will be satellites that will be bringing to Turksat a much more powerful capabilities for their missions, for their telecommunication missions. It's nearly 45% more than the previous generation. And thanks to the electrical propulsion, which are on the satellites, the lifetime of those two satellites will be as well twice longer than the previous one. So I guess that through the Q&As, we will, I guess, have the opportunities to answer to the uh, questions about innovations. But um, first of all, what I wanted to say as well is today I'm talking to you from Astrolab, which is our integration and test facility here in Toulouse. You can see here uh, the Turksat 5A satellites, which is one of the seven satellites which is currently under production here in Astrolab. And you can even see uh, a bit in front of them, in blue, the Turksat 5B uh, antenna. So Turksat 5A is almost ready. All the tests will be completed early October and ready to be launched before the end of the year. Airbus is a global market player for defense and space. We are leading the uh, telecommunication geo satellites market. We have been quite successful in 2019 with uh, six satellite contracted. And in back 2020, again, uh, the trend is pretty good with already four contracts. And what is important is that those contracts is confirming in particular in this uh, pandemic period that our customers are leading those products, in particular the two uh, 
from players uh, used by Airbus for the telecommunication markets, which are Eurostar Neo and Eurostar uh, on, on one side. So before leaving the floor uh, to you, uh, I would like to uh, show a small video uh, that will share with you what you cannot see in detail in this room, which is the manufacturing and the test of the satellite of Tuxat 5A, as I said, which that will be ready before the end of the year to be launched by SpaceX, with whom we are under contract for this launch. So I think it's time for the video now. Thank you. Yes, uh, Mr. Golia, thank you very much. Uh, it was a very uh, important uh, and brief video, but we, we had an opportunity to, uh, to we have an opportunity to see. But by the way, your your uh, I mean uh, where you are is very you have a great view of, of Turksat in your in the back. So thank you very much for this uh, very nice opportunity. So also we have a chance to see real life live uh, uh, video of uh, broadcast of uh, Tuxat 5A and congratulations. Airbus is a really very, very important global company. Uh, a couple of years ago, I had a chance to visit two uh, manufacturing facilities, but a commercial airplane uh, site. Uh, so it was a, a very nice, important chance to see Airbus A380. But it is said now we have to uh, say farewell, uh, goodbye to this enormous, gorgeous airplane. But thanks for your uh, showing some of your technology. Uh, and we will come back. I will come back to Toulouse again. I want to go to the United States. Uh, Miss uh, Bednarak is waiting for us at the moment. Uh, where are you right now? Which city, which state uh, at the moment are you in? Um, I'm in Washington, D.C. I am incredibly jealous of Francois's background to be able to have the satellite right behind him. I wish I was in our Los Angeles headquarters and could show you the rockets right behind me as well. But we'll have to settle <laughs> for my Washington, D.C. <laughs> Great. So we would like to listen to your first comments, uh, uh, Ms. Bednarek, and then I'll come back to Ankara uh, and Hassan. Ms. By the way, Mr. Hassan, Hassan Hussein Ertok, could you please uh, prepare your uh, sharing of screen? Yep. Screen sharing. Then, then uh, yep. whenever Ms. Bednarek uh, finish uh, her comments, I will come back to you. Yes, please.
Miss Bednarek, are you there? Can you hear me? You, yes. Yes, we are uh, ready to listen to you. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes. Yes, excellent. Um, first and foremost, thank you so much for, for inviting me to participate in this important discussion. The entire conference that has been put together uh, is excellent programming and has been very well received. Um, SpaceX is pleased and proud to be a partner with Turksat and Airbus on this important 5A mission and the, and the 5B mission as well. And we were thrilled to be selected to, to provide launch services for this critical satellite. And we look forward to seeing this as a start of a long-term partnership, not just with Turksat, but with, with Turkey as a whole, and look forward to enabling additional uh, space plans and programs. Um, SpaceX has had a banner 2020 year with, with many successes, and in that respect, rather than just uh, speak to them, I would like to show a short video that highlights uh, some of SpaceX's recent activities, and then I'll make a few, few comments after and then turn it back over to you. Yes, thank you. Stage one lights closing out. T minus ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Amazing. <laughs> Excellent. Thank, thank you for showing the, the brief video of, of some of the highlights of what SpaceX has recently achieved and, and what we're working on. Um, what happened? For, for SpaceX. Um, we, so far to date in 2020, we have launched 15 successful missions and we are on track to beat our record of 21 in, in 2020. We've had the successful uh, demonst demonstration mission with taking two astronauts to the International Space Station and returning them safely to Earth, which we are extremely proud of. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll end my comments just to say that we, we look forward to the successful launch of Turksat 5A. We're grateful for the partnership with Airbus and Turksat and uh, look forward to, to successfully launching that mission to um, help us cap off um, uh, an even better 2020. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much uh, indeed, uh, Ms. Stefan Bednarek. I think it's a privilege to work or, or to service this uh, in very important uh, company 
It's one of the world leaders of launching systems, space systems. Uh, amazing. It was an amazing uh, video as well. Thank you very much again. And I would like to come back to Ankara again. Uh, Tuktaat Vice President, uh, Mr. Hassan Fein Ertok. So we would like to uh, listen and watch your presentation, if you are ready. Yeah, I already shared it. Uh, I think it's going to be yes. put on the screen. Can we see that? No, not really. Uh, I think uh, there is a little technical issue. Not started yet. Mm, yes. Interesting. I'll share again. Can you see it? Uh, not yet. Let me see. Uh, yes, now it starts. It's coming. Now you see that now? Yes. Okay. No, uh, I, I have. Uh, I have a very short presentation, actually, it's just only two slides. Uh, since the topic is TurkSat 5A, I'd like to uh, start, uh, give you a brief dis uh, description of the satellite and uh, what's the coverage area. So it's going to provide probably a better understanding of what we are expecting from the satellite. So as you can see here, it's already, uh, actually, it was also shared in the video that Airbus uh, showed. Uh, it's uh, it's be, being manufactured by Airbus DS and it's the E3000 platform. It's electric orbit raising. This is important because electric orbit raising is uh, using electric thrusters uh, for uh, all the lifetime of the satellite uh, from from the launch vehicle to the orbit and during the lifetime. So it uh, consumes less uh, fuel. So the, the lifetime of the satellite increases a lot. So the maneuver lifetime of 5A is 31 years. And uh, when you compare it with the chemical thruster uh, satellites, it's almost half of it. So it's, it's going to give you a lot of edge on using the same satellite for, for a long time. So we have uh, the transponders is, uh, are, are the equipments that we use uh, for the payload. So these are the ones uh, sending the signal back to Earth. So we have uh, 42 transponders uh, on the satellite. The total capacity is 1,728 megahertz. It's a, it's a quite a big satellite. And the payload power is about 10 kilowatts. Uh, this is going to be the, the most powerful uh, satellite in our fleet. Uh, and when 5P comes, it's going to be uh, more powerful. Uh, so it's going to have uh, 12 kilowatts of power. And the launch period is before the end of this year. Uh, we are at the very end uh, uh, of the uh, of the testing sequence of the satellite in France, and when it's finished, we will ship it to it will it will be shipped to United States to Florida, and it will be launched uh, from Florida before the end of this year. And uh, one other thing I can say, since it's electric orbit raising, it takes uh, about four months to go to the orbit, so it, it's a long uh, voyage. Uh, so it's going to be operational uh, next year uh, in the second quarter. So this is the coverage area of Turksat 5A. The blue uh, shade is the is the coverage of the satellite. So it covers, uh, of course, our uh, main uh, focus is Turkey. So it's the centering the Turkey, but the whole Europe, uh, North uh, North Africa, most part of the North Africa, and we go all the way to Kazakhstan and and part of uh, going to the east. And in the African region, we have most of the sub-Saharan Africa and also South Africa. So 
we already have coverage in most of these fields, uh, but it's going to increase our capabilities and capacity so we can provide a better service uh, with a better price to, so we, to our customers and uh, to our government and to all the customers that we work with. So it's going to be a really important uh, satellite for us uh, for for our future. So this is only two slides. I think it's going it's 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 going to be enough to 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 open the uh, discussions about 5A. Thank you so much. I will uh, questions each by uh, the distinguished speakers. And uh, I was checking, looking your your map, uh, Mr. Uh, Ertok. Uh, all of Europe is inside our coverage. I mean, your coverage, except Iceland, I think. But most of most of Norway and, and Sweden, a little part of Lapland, maybe a little north part of Scandinavian countries. But it's great coverage and very important. And most of yeah. uh, African countries, as you guys mentioned, sub-Saharan and uh, in our neighboring geography. My uh, question, uh, with a comment, uh, Mr. Ertu. Uh, with your start 5A satellite, you will start operating satellites again in 30, 31 degrees east orbit after 42nd and 50 degrees east orbit. Am I right? What, what is the That's significance good. of this for TrueSat? Uh, and what kind of service services that the TrueSat plan to provide in this new orbit? And what is the importance of this change? Okay. Sure, sure. Uh, I think I, I can talk about a little bit of history. Uh, our satellite is it was launched in, in 1994, TURSAT-1B. It was operated at uh, 42 degrees east. And uh, in this uh, 26 years of satellite operation uh, of TURSAT, we, we have been operating satellites at uh, 31, 42, and 50 degrees east. We have, these are our main orbital positions. Uh, when you have an orbital position, you apply to an ITU to use that orbital position with the frequency band, and you have to bring a satellite to use those bands in that orbital position. So it's actually a long-term uh, investment for satellite operators to, to, to have the ability to use orbital positions. Uh, so it's one of our success as Turksat to, to materialize those three orbital positions and being able to operate satellites there. But the last time we operate satellite at 31 East was 10 years ago. It was 2010. Uh, it, it, since it was TubeSat 1C satellite was, was being operated at 31 East. And it, at the end of its lifetime, of course, we deorbited it uh, to the garbage, uh, garbage uh, orbit, I can say. And afterwards, uh, we haven't planned to, to uh, bring our own satellite at 31 East. In order to uh, uh, use your, in order to keep your orbital rights, you have to bring, you have to put your put a satellite, which is called as the BI. You bring into use satellite. We, we you use rental satellites for these 10 years to to keep our orbital rights there because they are these are as I mentioned these are the most important assets of the satellite operators and also the countries. So we are a satellite, national satellite operator. Uh, we work with B BTK and uh, as our uh, ITU member, uh, these are uh, the rights of our company and of Turkey. So these are very important assets that we, we are obliged to keep them. So uh, we decided it, it, it was a commercial decision also uh, for us to build our own satellite, to purchase our own satellite, TurkSat satellite for 31 East. That was the main idea behind TurkSat 5A. So we are going to secure our orbital rights at 31 East for more than 30 years with this satellite. This is a huge uh, importance. And also on the commercial side, on the business side, 31 East is a very valuable orbit. Uh, I, I mean that uh, it's it, there are a lot of uh, satellites nearby at 31 east so it's it's kind of crowded orbit it's not easy to operate a satellite or it's not easy to manage a satellite uh, and provide a business case but we, we will try our best to do that and uh, we are planning to uh, provide two uh, main kind of services as we do uh, it's data services mainly for 5a all the coverage areas as i as i show you in the map uh, is covered by the satellite. So we can provide satellite service to anyone in that coverage area. It can be a data service, which means 
uh, bringing data from one point to another, or it can be a TV broadcasting service as we do in 40, 42 degrees east in Turkey. 31 degrees east is a hot location, which means important TV broadcasting location, orbit location for some countries in Europe and some countries in the region. So we are also aiming those countries to provide TV broadcasting service with 5A satellite. So th th this is twofold, and these are very important business cases for us and business uh, aspects for us uh, with 5A. Uh, as I mentioned, for Turkey, which is our base, uh, base land, we, but we provide most of our service to, to our country, to our government, and to our customers in Turkey with 5A. We will. We are going to increase our capacity that we provide service in Turkey, which means we will be able to uh, provide different services from different orbital locations, and uh, also we will be able to uh, provide a better service with better quality satellite. So these are the aims that we will we are planning to reach with 5A. Yes, uh, clearly understand. Uh, thank you for this useful information. Uh, Mr. Ertuğ mentioned about BTK. BTK is a sort of a regula regulatory body in Turkey. It's a, a regulator, regulator institution, let's say. Uh, thank you again. Uh, I'll come back to Ankara. But uh, now I would like to ask a question for uh, Mr. Golia. Uh, Mr. Golia, what are the key technologies? Uh, I mean, uh, in general, Mr. Ertuğ uh, talked about it, but I would like to listen from you as well. What are the key technologies used on TurkSat 5, 5A, or let's say what makes TurkSat 5 program ready to provide the most telecom advanced service? What would you like to say? Uh, I think I will come back on one key element that uh, Hassan has already highlighted. This is the uh, electrical propulsion that is on board of satellites. Uh, I will not go into the technical details as an expert. Anyway, I'm not an expert. But I will try just to explain by a few words how innovative is this solution. Basically, electrical propulsion, thanks to the efficiency of the thrust, is enabling to thrust the satellite with half of the propellant mass. So this is xenon instead of chemical propulsion, but basically, with half of the mass of propellant, you can do the same mission. So, for a customer like Turksat, it means what? It means that all these propellant will be replaced by useful elements like payloads to do more services. And again, Turksat 5A and 5B are using this propulsion. It's not the first ones. It will be the number, uh, well, we have already uh, three satellites in orbit using this propulsion. And again, I think Hassan will not contradict me. Innovation and key technologies is important but first of all, that need to be safe, they need to be reliable, and we cannot have any uh, difficulties in orbit. This is why all those innovations which are on Turksat have been already flight proven, making this mission extremely safe. But again, Airbus is leader in this uh, technical uh, propulsion, electrical propulsion, and we are extremely pleased to have these solutions on board Turksat 5A and 5B, which is again bringing value to our customer Turksat. Yes, uh, thank you, um, Mr. Golier. And uh, another question for uh, Ms. Bednarek. Um, yes, I would like to ask about. I would like to ask a question about launch technologies, uh, advantages of space kits, your your company, your solutions, and your cooperation with Turksat. Can you please a little bit uh, add some more information on this uh, subject? Absolutely, and thank you for the question. Um, first and foremost, SpaceX is a space technology company, and we are committed, and our mission is to revolutionize space. Airbus and Turksat are uh, benefiting from the, the work that we have been doing, and we'll be launching the Turksat 5A mission on a Falcon 9 launch vehicle that has used flight hardware with, with previously flown flight hardware. This vehicle configuration that, that was selected has a 100% success rate. I think the um, conversation around 
recovering uh, launch hardware and reusing hard launch hardware is often focused around the cost savings. And while there certainly are cost savings, I think the real benefit that that deserves some additional attention is how that this how this increases the reliability of launch vehicles. Um, uh, unlike other launch vehicles on the market, when we are able to return the boosters back to Earth, we learn a lot about the hardware that we see. When the fairings return to Earth, we learn a lot about the fairings that, that we were actually able to, to get to see. And now that SpaceX has recovered, I believe, 59, 60 boosters, we've learned a lot of things along the way. And that allows us to improve our launch vehicles, see if there was anything that needs fixing in the future and future missions, um, and, and really design that into, um, into the rockets. So first and foremost, we're, we're proud to be able to offer the most, the most reliable vehicle with flight proven hardware. Um, and, and then just, just SpaceX um, has designed a vehicle, really it's the first vehicle fully designed in the 21st century um, with, with the most advanced technologies. And uh, we're, we're proud to be offering this, this service to, to Turksat. It's been a great partnership so far um, with, with Airbus as well. Um, and I think our three organizations have worked very well together to be able to, to bring this mission to fruition. And we're, we're looking forward to, to launching this uh, here in the not too distant future. Uh, Ms. Benorek, I think you have an international uh, environment of from different countries. You you have a, many colleagues from different countries. So uh, I mean, as far as I know, your company also uh, is is a very good you know gate to you know to reach uh, innovative technologies for international brilliant engineers and experts. So that's why I said it was it is a uh, privilege to work there. Uh, don't you think so? Um, I am the most proud employee at SpaceX. I've had the privilege of working for this company for uh, 11 years now. And to watch the company grow from launching Falcon 1 missions to now um, upwards of, of 15 plus missions a year to successfully deliver astronauts, I, I couldn't be more proud. And while a lot of our, our focus um, often tends to be on work that SpaceX has done for the US government, I'm extremely proud of the international work that we're doing. And long-term SpaceX's goal is to enable humanity to be a multi-planet and that is not a singular U.S. effort. We see that as, as a global effort. And so I'm um, you know, eager to build on the relationships that we have from launching satellites for our international commercial and government customers and be able to expand that into, into future areas as well. So um, yeah, yes, to answer your question, I am very proud to work at SpaceX. It's a, it's a wonderful company to be a part of, um, seeing launches happen on such a regular basis and to see the advancements that are, that are happening at such a quick pace is, uh, is, is really a privilege. Now, thank you very much. Once many years ago, I had a chance to visit Cape Canaveral uh, Space Center and maybe we, we could have a chance also to visit maybe during the launch time. I know it is difficult to travel at the moment uh, because of restrictions of pandemic, uh, but uh, I hope uh, uh, we have a chance, we could have a chance to, to go to launch uh, to witness this historical uh, day. Absolutely, we would love to have you for a launch, so just let me know. <laughs> Thank you so much, Indy. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Ertuk, uh, I have another question. Uh, I have another question for you. Um, I, you are planning to, uh, I think you mentioned about a little bit, but I'm asking this question for, let's say, new beginners, because uh, among our audience, there are also, let's say, new beginners and uh, not uh, just an experts or professionals about this uh, sector. Uh, you are planning to finalize to start 5P as well soon. What is the difference between 5A and 5B in general? Mm -hmm. uh, the Airbus is also working on the manufacturing of TUSAT 5P right now. Uh, TUSAT 5P uh, will be launched uh, mid next year. We are, we, are, we are planning to launch it mid next year. So it's going to be operational by the end of 2021. Uh, the major difference between 5A and 5P is 5B, 5P is having a payload uh, in Ka band frequency. So in 5A we, we have Ku band frequency, which is a lower frequency, let's say 12, uh, 12 gigahertz, 14 gigahertz. But 
we go up to more than 20 gigahertz on KA band, which provides us uh, more bandwidth uh, in terms of satellite cap capacity. On the 5P, we have a KA band multi beam uh, payload, which provides us uh, 53 gigabits of capacity over the coverage area. The coverage area will be Turkey, uh, Aegean Sea, Mediterranean Sea, and all, all our uh, neighboring countries, and also goes uh, down to Africa, some part of uh, East Africa, uh, I'm sorry, North Af Northeast Africa, and also South Africa, and also Nigeria. So we have more than 70 beams on the satellite, which means you can use the frequency again and again with the beams, uh, beam shapes, and it, it provides you to have more, more capacity on the satellite. TubeSat 5P will be a, our flagship satellite for data services. We are going to provide a broadband uh, internet access to our customers in Turkey or in, 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 in the coverage area. We will provide services, especially in the mobility side, which means we, we can provide internet and data services to, uh, to, to airplanes, to ships, and all the moving vehicles on land. So it's a very important capability, and we will be increasing our current capability uh, more than 13 times. So it's going to also bring up, uh, bring down the prices, megabit prices, which is very important because satellite communication is always considered as, a, uh, as an expensive uh, alternative for communication. But we, with these kind of high, high capacity satellites, you can bring down the megabit price and you can provide more and reliable and uh, achievable and also uh, cost effective services uh, to your customers. So that's the main uh, I, that's the main goal for us with, with the 5P satellite. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, another question for uh, Mr. Golier. Uh, Mr. Golier, internet usage intensified and demand in high technology products increased during pandemic pandemic process. And how do you think this space sector will progress after the pandemic ends? What do you think? Uh, so, sorry, I was not hearing very well your questions. Can you repeat it, please? Uh, yes. Now, can you hear me? Yes, yes, and I hear you well now. Thank you. Uh, the, the question, uh, I'm talking about internet usage all over the world, as you see, like at the moment we use an online technology for mostly conferences, webinars, internet usage intensified, and demand, especially in high technology products, increased during the pandemic, pandemic process, pandemic days. And how do you think the space sector will progress after the pandemic ends? So I, I think the, uh, the pandemic has been the demonstration of the fact that uh, telecommunications need what was absolutely key. So as you said, even today, so we are, we are discussing through, through webinar, many people, even in others, but even everywhere in the world are working in teleworking from their home and the, the, the needs for even reinforcing what the ground infrastructure is providing is absolutely key. So it's both in terms of bandwidth, quantity, uh, numbers of information and data we can share, but it's also in terms of uh, reliability, uh, in terms of uh, resilience, in terms of safety of all those infrastructure. And through all the discussions we had with our customers in the past uh, weeks and months through the pandemic, those needs have been very, very, very confirmed. And what is important to say now, it's uh, through the different contracts we have signed recently, uh, we have seen that in front of this need, because of the pandemic, the different products we can provide through OneSat or Eurostar Neo are answering pretty well to what our customer is expecting. But again, I have a strong belief of the fact that space communication will be absolutely key and even reinforced after the pandemic. Thank you. Uh, I have another question for Ms. Badnarek. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Thank you. So your company, uh, SpaceX, created many successful uh, projects. What uh, What is your next goal, next step? Because I think, in my opinion, reusable uh, rocket technology is, is a revolutionary scientific step, uh, engineering or scientific, let's say. 
Uh, what is the next step, uh, especially which subject or which technical or uh, engineering area do you focus more nowadays? Um, th thank you for the question. At, at SpaceX, there was always a next step. We were always working on the, on the next great thing. So uh, we, we don't ever tend to remain stagnant for very long and are always, are always forward leaning. Um, that being said, there are a number of projects that SpaceX is, is active on. I think what I'd like to focus on a little bit at, at this moment is our uh, next launch vehicle development program. Um, we are leveraging the experience that we have from Falcon 1, Falcon 9, Falcon Heavy, learning how to recover and reuse rockets, um, the engine that, that we've undergone for, for many years now, and uh, taking that and implementing it into our next generation launch vehicle called Starship. And this vehicle, um, it will be the most powerful launch vehicle ever developed. It's very large, <laughs> it's, it's very grand, um, but we, uh, you know, focusing on, on potential applications and working with uh, with Airbus and, and Turksat in the future is that that this vehicle um, can deliver satellites to Earth orbit and beyond at a at a lower cost per launch than our current vehicles because it's a fully reusable system. So whereas with Falcon 9, where um, it's it's only partially recoverable, we can't get the second stages. We haven't been able to get the second stages back um, with Starship. That vehicle will be fully reused, fully recoverable, and fully reusable. Um, now that vehicle will be able to deliver both cargo and people to Earth orbit and, and other destinations as well. Um, but I look forward to um, discussing that with our with our commercial satellite partners and learning how that can enable uh, their future businesses and future growth and opportunities. Thank you. Uh, another question for Mr. Uh, Ertuk, uh, Tüksat Vice President. Uh, Mr. Artuk, I have a question about competition. Uh, what do you think about space race in general? As far as I know, nearly 30 countries uh, have their satellites. Uh, what is the motivation behind this competition? Uh, what do you think, as an engineer or well, an think, expert? Yeah, first of all, it's it's uh, the countries start this uh, this getting to this race or actually having the service on satellites. Uh, first of all, they're they are being able to, they want to be able to reach uh, space. That's the first step. I mean, uh, you have to have a, a appearance in space and you have to have assets in space. Uh, that's the first, uh, I think that's the first point that the countries are trying to achieve. There are countries right now uh, which do not have satellites in space and trying to, uh, trying to do that, but it's really hard in these years because especially in the geo geosynchronous orbit that we operate our satellites, it's really hard to find a place to put your satellite and operate it because it's very crowded. And because of that, it, it's it, it, our uh, good part, I mean, our uh, success story is coming from our uh, investments uh, from 30 years ago. So that was the main, uh, that was the main, I think, uh, point that with the countries try to reach first. And then uh, satellite connectivity, uh, the, the advantage of satellite connectivity is you can cover whole world uh, theoretically with three satellites in geo orbit. Uh, so uh, it's, it's the best way to connect, to connect people all around the world because terrestrial communication or mobile communication uh, are, are depending on the, on the terrestrial networks. And, uh, you know, that's also a huge investment that you have to bridge countries under the seas, under the oceans. And it's a big investment also that you have to put underground. But with one satellite from one point to another, you can easily connect uh, people uh, and with huge coverage area that I show the coverage area uh, over 5A. And there, there, there are the bigger coverage areas for satellites. So this race started to... Uh, this race started to have a capabilities in space to communication needs because communication is one of the most important needs for the humans uh, as like uh, you know as like water or food we have to communicate and in the, in this era we cannot think of not communicating from with, with each other that's 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 out of question so the race is now uh, trying to bring the best value with the best price 
and the best coverage in space. So with the, these, uh, the new satellites, uh, we are trying to, uh, as Airbus the manufacturer, Francois will, will, will let you know about their new technology. And uh, we, we are trying to reach, uh, right now, uh, one satellite is about, it, it takes about three years to be, to be manufactured. But we, are, we want it to be faster. We want, to be, we want it to be cheaper and we want it to be more flexible uh, as a satellite operator. So that's the, that's the way technology goes right now in terms of manufacturing. And on the other hand, as Stephanie uh, can give, give us information, the LEO constellations are also another topic right now in the space business and the space era. So they are going to provide the global coverage to everyone and it's a huge investment as well. So uh, these are the main drivers right now. The trying to connect people because we are producing huge amount of data every day as human beings. You know, the, you know, the, the videos are everywhere. So we, we just take videos of everything and share with everyone. So this is a huge amount of data and this data should be you know, transferred to somewhere. So, and one of the easiest ways are, are using satellites. That's why satellite technology is here to serve humanity and the needs for communication for better technology with better pricing and, and, and better capacity. Yes, and every, each customer wants to get a faster internet connection everywhere, wherever they go, especially when they travel another country or another region. And they, yeah. they share tons of pictures in Instagram and Twitter. And sometimes, Everywhere. including me, that I want to share a longer, little bit longer videos uh, using uh, sometimes different applications than WhatsApp, sometimes Telegram and some others. Yes, exactly. I, I have a, it's, I, I think, not very complicated, uh, but a technical uh, question for Mr. Golia. Mr. Golia, is it possible to expand a life of a satellite which still stays in orbit is it technically possible you mean to 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 keep the satellite in orbit didn't get it a uh, little bit uh, more i mean the life of of a satellite in the same orbit uh, i mean the life is it possible to extend the life lifetime okay so, so thanks for the questions uh Currently, with, with the technology we have, we have already the capability to make a satellite living after Sat 5 f for instance, 30 years, I mean 3 zero, which is a long time. Uh, so there, at this moment, there is a question mark, which is, is it better to extend the lifetime of a satellite that will be in 30 years probably a bit obsolete compared to the technologies we will be able to fly at that time? Or do we need to extend these uh, satellites for a longer period? And uh, when we see what we are developing, for instance, for one sat, and uh, Mr. Asanertok was mentioning faster, cheaper, we have now the capability, as of today, to bring very strong, powerful satellites within 18 months from all Earth in orbit, 18 months being operational, for reduced cost compared to what are the technologies today. And I, I strongly believe, and that is what we are following in Airbus, that it's, it's better to catch, to follow the new technologies rather than trying to, to uh, extend the lifetime of satellites that is already lasting nearly 30 years. 30 years. Thank you. Uh, a question for uh, Ms. Bednarek. Uh, is there a satellite pollution in this space right now? I mean, is it... Is it an overcrowded environment? Do you think there are too many uh, satellites? I mean, how do you navigate among this crowded environment? Is it getting more difficult to navigate and uh, for other reasons? Are there too many satellites at the moment? What do you think? I mean it, it's a, it's an interesting question, a little bit outside of my my, my launch expertise, but um, you know, generally, I'm I'm excited to see more activity in space. I think that for the industry and, and good good for for the world overall, um, and to enable additional connectivity, um, as my colleague Hassan was was mentioning, is 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 an essential service. Um, I do think that uh, companies who are who are launching. Uh, many satellites in space and and providing launches need to act responsibly. And so at, at SpaceX, we're we're certainly making every effort to to do that as well to make sure 
this is a sustainable uh, environment for for all f all players and and future generations. Thank you. And uh, we will uh, we are about to finalize our our webinar. Uh, last remarks and last questions, maybe. Uh, about 6A, would you like to say something, Mr. Ertuk, about 6A? I think it will be mostly uh, domestic, domestically designed uh, satellite with more national sources. Uh, you will use this uh, technology with the satellite. Would you like to say something, something about this future satellite? Sure, sure, sure. Uh, 6A is very important for Turkey. Uh, 6A is the first uh, indigenous uh, uh, satellite that we manufacture in Turkey. It's a communication satellite, as I said, the first communication satellite. We had, uh, you know, we had ability to manufacture uh, reconnaissance satellites before, but this is the first time that we're working on communication satellite. It's been more than five years that we started the project, and uh, there are four main uh, uh, companies working on it to tax space. TAI, Ascension, and CTEC. These are the you know four important companies in Turkey in terms of technology development. And uh, we are also getting the end of that uh, manufacturing. So we are hoping to launch 6A in 2022 uh, up in sky. So we will be one of the 10 countries who is able to manufacture their own communication satellites. This is a very huge step for us. And I think it's going to bring uh, more projects in Turkey because uh, you know uh, it's, it's going to create a lot of self-confidence that the things that we are able to do, and I think we will look for the next steps. And 6A will be uh, the most important satellite in our fleet because it's going to be domestic built, and uh, more than uh, 600 people are working on it right now, engineers, and they are working day and night, and they are trying to finish it up by 2022. It's very exciting to be a part of it, and I hope we will have more projects like that in the years. Uh, Mr. Artur, I think uh, 5P also will be launched by uh, SpaceX, uh, right? That's correct. Right. That's correct. Yeah, I mean, we, we, we have the agreement with you for two satellites, so it will be launched with SpaceX as well. Do we, do we have an idea? Maybe it's a little bit early, but do we have an idea about the launch of, launch of 6A? maybe additional question can turkey reach a launching capacity in a foreseeable uh, feature i know it's not easy but uh, is it one of the uh, goals well uh, it is possible of course we we are having some projects in turkey i think re recent days we we see one of our sounding rockets to reach uh, 130 kilometers and up in space this is the first steps that you can uh, you can build a launcher and of course, it's a very difficult uh, target. It's a very difficult thing. And it's a long term project. You have to keep working on it. You have to keep working on it. As uh, you know, uh, Stephanie told us that how long they work to reach this point. And it's not really easy to bring up a, a satellite up in space. You have to have a huge power. And Turkey, geographically, it, is not suitable to, to launch big satellites like 5A, 5P, and 6A. And you have to have, uh, you know, you have to find a, a certain a, you know, suitable place around the world to have that launch as capability. But the, for the small satellites, it's possible, of course, you can launch site in Turkey for uh, small, uh, small loads. And we are also working on it, as I said, I know that there are, uh, there are one or two projects running right now. Uh, and we, we are hoping to see the outcome in, in coming years. Turkey, Turks, Turkey will be uh, one of the key players also trying to reach space with their own abilities. Uh, thank you. Uh, and last question for Mr. Golia. Mr. Golia, Turkey and Airbus are very important partners. Uh, I mean, if you look at the commercial uh, airplane site, uh, even some Turkish companies and manufacture some very important uh, products for, for these uh, airplanes. And on the military side, Turkey is a partner of A400M uh, military cargo planes. And in, in satellite business also, as we mentioned before, there is an important cooperation between 5A and 5B and some other uh, satellites. How do you see the future of 
uh, cooperation between Airbus company and Turkey, the feature, how do you see the feature? And uh, what other, what other, you know, let's say, uh, cooperation areas do you, do, you, do you see this or do you feel? So, thanks for the question. Uh, effectively, through the, uh, the Turksat 5A and 5B contract, it's a very strong cooperation as well with Turkey and, and Turksat. Uh, so first of all, for bringing these satellites for, 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 for the capacity and for the business at Turksat. But as well, it has been the opportunity to have a, a, a cooperation for training people from Turkey. So we have had 12 engineers trained here in France during more than a year for different, different types of activities, uh, like uh, being trained for flying the satellites later when they will be in orbit but as well to be trained to manage uh, future development and new technologies for space. And this is, I think, absolutely key for Turkey to have this kind of training and to get those people uh, on board to, to be the future of the, Turk sea, of the uh, space uh, technologies in Turkey. I would like to highlight that those people that have been uh, joining our team during more than a year was, was pretty exceptional. Uh, they have been following this 12 months training in the, uh, in the uh, Space and Aerotetic School of, of France, where I have been too many years ago, probably some years ago. It's a pretty good school, and the feedback we got from that school is that they have never seen such good students, such good engineers to be trained. So I think for the future, it's uh, very good for, for, for Turkey. And uh, again, this cooperation has been a real solid uh, opportunity to develop uh, these uh, space capabilities for, for, for Turkey between Airbus and Turkset. Yes, thank you, thank you very much. Uh, just, uh, just maybe something I would like to add, we, we have also on board Turksat 5B, some equipment coming from Aselsan for Turkey, which will be flying on uh, Turksat 5B, which is also uh, an element of cooperation in our, uh, in our program. Yes, exactly, uh, Aselsan is one of the most important uh, companies in the world. I think they are in the uh, top 100 list of the, among the defense and scientific institutions in the world. So it's a proud of uh, Turkey. Um, yes, uh, to the United Washington DC and uh, Ms. Bednarek, what is your last words and closing remarks? Uh, any information or expectation for near future? What do you say? No, I, I think mostly I just want to thank Airbus and Turksat for choosing SpaceX to be a part of this important 5A program and, and 5B as well. I'm really happy with how the partnership has, has gone so far and look forward to, to a successful launch. Um, we're, we're proud that we were able to bring our, our reusable technology and, and bring you the most, the most reliable vehicle for, for these missions. So I hope this is the first of many and, um, and look forward to the, the continued partnership. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, and Mr. Antok, any, any comments, last words? We're about to finalize yeah. our webinar. Yeah, as Stefan said that we are also very happy working with Airbus and SpaceX. It's been a very, uh, very good cooperation so far. And we are really hoping to reach uh, the final point that is to see our satellites uh, up in space operational without a problem. This is our hope and we are working hard on it. And one last thank I have to I have to have to my colleagues. Uh, we have seven of our engineers in France and UK as our monitoring team. Their duty is follow the manufacturing and testing uh, activities on our satellites to, to, to get the best out of uh, Airbus. Actually, I like to say uh, they really they really work they work really hard day and night uh, to get the job done. I really. It, I want to thank them a lot, and uh, without them, I don't think we won't be able to have this success, and uh, I, I really thank them a lot. Thank you. Uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, and uh, it is a uh, really honor for me to, to listen and share opinions of uh, distinguished speakers from France, from the United States, and from Turkey. And uh, good evening for uh, Toulouse, France. Uh, for Ankara. Good evening. It's like an Eurovision Song Contest farewell. Maybe Mr. Van Dijk <laughs> doesn't have an idea, but 
what was happening in Eurovision Song Contest, but I'm sure uh, from France, Mr. Jolie will remember from in the past. And thank you very much indeed. I really appreciate and uh, for, for, for your time. Uh, good evening. Uh, and I, I think good morning, I have to say, for the Washington DC. Uh, we have a seven hours uh, difference. Uh, have a good day. Uh, and we will continue our webinar with the seventh uh, webinar at 7.30 p.m. Uh, please stay with us. Thank you very much and bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you bye Bye-bye. Go for TLI, over. Hello, 11, thank you.